So every one of us has a unique race, a unique life race that God has given to us. He's given you your race. It's a, gate, it's, a, it's a race that he has uniquely gifted you to run. Unfortunately, that race is not a short sprint on a flat oval track where you can see the course. It's more akin to a long marathon with ups and downs and with many twists and turns. Our devotional verse today is one of my favorite passages. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2 exhorts us, Therefore, since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that, that hinders us and the sin that so easily entangles us, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set out before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. John Maxwell says about this text that it shows the importance of having passion persistence, and purpose as we run our life race. I'd like to look at some principles in this passage about how to successfully run our life race. I'd also like to draw some practical lessons from my career long, long time ago as a long distance runner during high school and university. Running actually had a very significant impact on my own life calling. It was as a 14 year old running through the slums of Cuernavaca, Mexico, that God first impressed me with the dignity and the needs of the poor. And that experience has influenced what I've done in my life for the last 40 years. Ironically, I never really enjoyed running. I liked the camaraderie and I loved the competition. When I was 18, I decided to run a marathon. Mind you, the farthest that I'd run before that, because cross country in high school was only two miles, was about seven to eight miles at a stretch. So I worked my way up to 13 miles, a whopping half a marathon. I worked out with a couple of high school buddies and we signed up together to run the marathon. About a mile into the race, we met some old guys. At least they seemed like old guys. They were probably in their <laughs> late 30s, early 40s. But they were from Palos Verdes and they had run the course before. And they had a really good plan to run that course in three hours and 15 minutes. Well, we were planning on three hours and 30 minutes. So we said, well, why not? So we joined them. And throughout a marathon, there are tables of water, juice, and snacks. If you don't stop, you will dehydrate and you'll simply run out of energy in a marathon. So I took advantage of those refueling stops, but nonetheless, at about mile 18, I hit what they call the wall. I could hardly put one foot in front of another. I desperately felt like quitting, especially since my buddies had already dropped out, and those old guys, they just kept running. <laughs> that was a very lonely and painful period in those 26 miles. However, I did press on, and I'm proud to say that eventually I got my win back and I actually passed up those old guys at about mile 22. I learned some very practical life lessons from that race. And here are seven that I gleaned as I was reflecting on that experience and this idea that we each have a race to run. First of all, preparation is critical. And I might say diehard persistence and perseverance can be a good compensator when we're not totally prepared for the race that we have. Number two, don't run alone. Make sure you have someone to cheer you on. I've been very blessed for the last 45 years to have a wonderful life partner who cheers me on every day. And I have a fantastic team of colleagues at CMMB, some of whom are here today, uh, that we cheer each other on in the race that we're in. Number three, run with someone who knows the course. It really helps. Number four, have someone help pace you in your race. Number five, take breaks. Practice self-care. Number six, don't give up even when that voice inside of you is screaming, just quit. 
Many years ago, my wise old mother uh, shared with me a proverb. She said, never doubt in darkness what God has shown you in the light. And number seven, to the extent possible, finish strong. Fortunately, though, we have more than just lessons from a marathon by which to, uh, to live and to guide us in our life race. God makes it abundantly clear that we are not running life alone. And he himself wants to encourage each of us in our own unique race of life. There are three important principles in today's passage in Hebrews 12. First, we're not running alone even if we feel like we are. We're surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses who have already successfully run their race. They're cheering us on like the mighty crowds that line a marathon. Second, we need to be focused and disciplined in our pursuit. We're told to throw off everything that hinders us and to run with perseverance. And third, he wants us to keep our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith, rather than looking at our circumstances, even when we're exhausted. Scripture also gives us some wonderful promises along with these principles for running life's race. God promises, us, promises to guide us in this race. In Psalm 119.5, we're told his word is a light on our path. God promises to empower us. As the Apostle Paul tells us in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And when we inevitably get tired, and we will in running a marathon, in running life's marathon, God promises to give us fresh wings. In Isaiah 40, 31, we're told, those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. And, we get, and when we get discouraged, remember this promise from Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. <clears throat> plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. How wonderful it would be to be able to say, as the Apostle Paul did towards the end of his ministry to his young disciple Timothy, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Let me close with some words of encouragement from Psalm 139. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. You are known, and you are not alone. God knows you, and he's always with you. I hope that this conference has been a time of rich encouragement to you, a brief respite in your own life race, a time for refreshment and refu refueling. Regardless of where you are in the life of race, in the race of life, may Jesus bring you hope and strength perseverance, and rest. God bless you each. We're going to take a few minutes now in quiet prayer and reflection. And there are a few questions actually in your, uh, uh, in your brochure if you want to look to those. And then Reverend Dan Irvine will be leading us uh, in a time of communion. But the questions that are in your book are, how would you describe the race that you're on? Where are you in that race? 
In the Psalms, David reflect, would reflect on God's past goodness, especially in times of trial. What are some specific points along the way where you can see that God empowered or encouraged you, where he stepped into those moments of trial? Who has he brought into your life to encourage you in this race, to cheer you on as part of your great cloud of witnesses? And what does it practically mean to fix our eyes on Jesus, the hope that we have eternally? So enjoy this time of reflection.